Hey YouTube, I've got this giant, giant box. Absolutely filled with Action Man. So let's have a look and see what I've got. This box is absolutely rammed. Now there is some really cool um, Iceman here, which I've never owned. I've always wanted to own it. I've been looking to try on one for a while, but every time it comes up for sale, it's usually about once a year. It's always, always sells really quickly before I can afford it. And it's this last one right here. Now let's take a closer look. So I'm gonna try and keep this short and sweet. This is a really cool um, amphibious car made by Sharna, which is Sharna here. But on the front it says Shirley Toys. Um, so this is not actually Action Man. A lot of these toys were made in the 70s with Action Man being the 1-6 scale, the vehicles in the Action Man range were quite expensive and there wasn't as many to start off with. And so what Cheryl Lee did was they took the opportunity and made vehicles for 1-6 scale figures. And this is one of my favorite ones ever. I always love these kind of like amphibious cars. If you had a really cool um, pond, you could drive it into it. But so far, this is pretty cool. This is in good condition overall. It's got a few marks on the um, old stickers. But apart from that, it's pretty cool. So I'd like to point out that I paid um, quite a lot of money for this. It came from uh, Europe. It wasn't actually from a UK collector. It was from a European collector. And I paid a lot of money. The reason why is because of some items in that I want to keep myself. Uh, for example, like this radio set. Um, I don't own this set in my collection. It's not the most expensive set in the world, in the world, but it rarely comes up for sale. It's pretty cool. The box is a bit worn. It has this like little headset you can wear, and it's really cool radio pack with the Action Man details on it. Next up we've got this cool box which I think is filled with figures. We have a blues and, not sorry blues and royals, a lifeguard. These are absolutely beautiful these figures, they're ceremonials. This one here is missing a bit of, um, a bit of hair in his plume. It looks really cool with his sword there, his belt's falling apart as always. These belts are very, very delicate. But he's quite cool. I can probably get about 50 to 60 pounds for him. If I try to find the other pieces, I might have to get more. Then we've got a late issue. This is more like the 80s off the card. Jungle Explorer or Jungle Fighter. He has like the two-tone trousers and jacket. When these jackets were on the small cards, they're very hard to find matching trousers. But he's an eagle eyes. Pretty cool. Always good to get eagle eyes, they're always fun. They always sell well, people always want those. Next up is one, one toy that's gone up and up in price for some reason. It's getting quite difficult to find it in relatively good condition. This is a the Action Deep Sea Diver. A really cool figure, it has its red tap. Usually that's missing. It has its weights, it has its, um, its hammer there. But a really, really cool figure. Really iconic toy, really. It comes with a tube as well, which is not, I don't think is included. Where if you blow into the tube in the bath, he would um, sink. Very, very cool. Ah, fantastic. A very iconic toy is next. This is the German Stormtrooper. Comes with his gun, the machine gun, usually always broken on the barrel and the stock and his belt. That belt there is actually the late issue German or maybe it might be the uh, French Farnesian belt. I'll need to check that out. If it's last issue then it's worth quite a bit of money. This box, typical 1970s, 1980s ice cream box filled with boots, boots and shoes. 
Nothing in there I can see which is special, they're all just left and right. Your standard boots. Any Axeman collector will know, at one point when you start collecting, you need these desperately because you never have enough, and all of a sudden you have more than you will ever need. Then we have another, another amphibious car sort of thing. So actually this might be more of a, yeah, it's an amphibious car, but it's, it's got room at the back for more soldiers, which is quite cool. Um, never seen this one before. It has its front bit there like that, yeah. Pretty cool. Imagine this is probably made by Cheryl Lee. I don't think this is Action Man. I don't think they did, did one. Oh, it is Action Man. There you go. Have a toy Action Man. I wasn't actually aware that he did one in the Action Man range. Somewhere in the back of my mind it was there, I think. This is the first time I've actually ever seen one in real life. So that's pretty cool. Well, I keep it in my collection. I am trying to get every single Action Man item there ever is, as some of you are probably aware. I have quite a big action man collection, but I don't really collect vehicles uh, apart from maybe the go car and the racing car and the space shuttle. But apart from that, I try not to collect vehicles because they're just too big. I haven't, I haven't got a museum to hold them in. <laughs> and then we've got a bag of bits. We have a plastic dark helm uh, hat that is not action man, maybe one of his European cousins. Life raft, Australian style jacket, some trousers, the camera for the um, space, 1960s space figure, and just some random pieces like belts and bits. Nothing special there. Another bag. Trousers. The jacket, a really funky jacket that looks like it's Mego or Cindy. The awesome, awesome camp commandant German figure, that's his long trench coat. I rarely see those trench coats for some reason. Everybody else seems to find them quite easily. Another brown stain jacket worth nothing. Uh, some normal green, I think it's the sabotage outfit, commando outfit, German tunic, some more basic outfits. Always cool. I don't think this is quite an underrated item when it's the double coat. Very underrated item. They usually came on small cards. I think they only, only came on small cards actually. Great for accessorising your navy figure. Some mountaineer and polar stuff. Uh, action team jacket, another Australian jungle fighter sort of jacket, Australian fighter, lots of jungle, lots of Australian stuff in this in this lot. Um, 1D lifeguard tunics, second issue Australian jungle fighter outfit in the 70s, it's really faded. Navy jacket, another commando jacket, a weird little jacket with a little, I think that's Big Jim from the space set. And the white jumper from the Adventurer. Another duffer coat. The Jungle Explorer. Your standard soldier. Uh, I think it's a staff officer, German staff officer. T-shirt or shirt. Another one. British escape officer. Long coat. To go along with your camp commandant. This comes in nearly every single job lot. A leather jacket, tank commander, armoured car commander. The armoured car commander from the 60s has like a um, this material on his cuffs. And last but not least, a very weird small thin pair of trousers. Most likely Mego. This box. Lots of shoes and bits. We have Ooh, that is from one of the, um, what are they called, emergency services sort of thing. It's over the, highway, not highway patrol, was it mountain, the mountain rescue? Something like that. That's pretty cool. You know, I, I never had one of these before in my collection. The 
Blue Helmet, which I think is a uh, European release. <laughs> Some kind of um, Austrian-German style cap. That's not Action Man, but that's quite funny. Not sure what that is. It's not Action Man. Is it Migo maybe, or some kind of Migo line? Nice to get the Action Man helmet with the visor and the oxygen mask. That's always a good find. Uncracked as well, which is lovely. Um, some weird kind of David Crocky hat, Crockett hat. Um, in Germany, in Europe, they really loved the cowboy range, cowboys and Indian range, they really loved it, they really embraced it, so a lot of their toys were cowboys and Indians, um, rightly so, they did not have things like German Nazis and stuff, because obviously the connotations of the war, um, loads of Indian and other shoes, another box, this time it's filled with helmets. Um, loads and loads and loads of British Tommy helmets. These are so easy to come by. I find them in like nearly every job lot. Um, but still you can get three, four pounds of them. They go quite well at toy shows. Another German helmet. He's got a bit of crushing. But still people pay money for it. Oh wow, another one of these. That's pretty cool. They're hairpiece for one of the um, ceremonials. HMS Victory hat, uh, that's quite cool. I think it's Belfast, it's the, it's the rare one to find. Lots and lots of hats and helmets, some more French stuff. Berets. That looks like a motorbike helmet. Maybe a French action man police officer, or maybe just like something like Cindy or something. Uh, HMS Arc Royal, and yes, loads and loads of helmets, nothing and um, caps and hats and woody hats and stuff. Nothing special, just a bit of good old fun. Like I say, I did pay a lot of money for all this stuff here, so it was, um, you know, I need to make my money back on this. So everything will be for sale, everything will be listed everywhere, and you're more than welcome to make me an offer. If you see anything you like, I can hold it and, you know, you can pay me in a week or two. Um, millions and millions of guns and belts. Uh, that just goes on forever. Ever and ever and ever. Uh, the harp. Is that all the harping on it? Yes, it does. So, if you ever get the um, harpoon gun, it's usually always missing the actual spear. So that's good to find. Yeah, loads and loads and loads of stuff there, loads of stuff. Um, and then we have three bags just filled with pieces. Some of it looks like it could be Mego, some of it's kind of European. Lots and lots of items. Uh, incredible, incredible. So much stuff here. Bag of bits again, some German stuff there. I will get this up. Get this all out, but it's just it would take me forever. I'll be here for hours. Um, let's get another bag of bits. Look at the weapons there, loads and loads and loads. If anybody's after anything in particular, give me a shout. I'm, I might have it. <laughs> I have so much stuff here, I might have it. This massive truck. Um, I can't remember what this is called. Is it a multi terrain vehicle? I think. They do them in the, um, I think in the American line, you have one which has like a, a back bit and has a cover and it's yellow and stuff like that. But this is quite cool. I actually really like this vehicle a lot. I just don't have the space to display it, unfortunately. Um, some British stuff there. It looks like the Spatch Rider outfit. Majority of the stuff's there, apart from the helmet. This is from the um, RNLI sets. You kind of like dangle your action man along the line and you can put them in there. This is cool, this is good stuff. I will be looking through this myself, don't you worry. Um, majority of the Jungle Explorer outfits in there. Some more Cowboys and Indians. Europeans love their Cowboys and Indians. 
Uh, some more British stuff. British rifle. I actually have one of these in my loft. Um, a jacket which I think is Oscar Goldman from the Six Million Dollar Man range. Some more basic uniform. Argo and Argo and Sunderland Sutherland outfit. Argo and Sutherland, that's the word. I also want to call it like Argo and Sunderland. Um, well, it looks like the remains of a Space Explorer outfit. Not Space Explorer. Space Ranger outfit. It's the rubber outfit. I'm surprised that hasn't perished by now. That's pretty cool. I don't have those in my collection because they keep perishing, but you can get, actually get reproductions from the original moulds. Some more pieces there. So I'm speaking really fast, faster than usual because I'm so excited. I just need to get this all filmed. Look at that, it's just filled with more and more outfits. I don't think I'm going to find anything rare here. I don't think there's going to be no Aston Villa kit, no Space Explorer. I don't think that's going to be in it. But it's just some good quality stock, really. I imagine that's the um, RNLI outfit. It's a really weird cloth. Oh, it's like a little um, bit that goes around your waist. So this is missing a few pieces and then it's a bit like it's broken. But overall, I can probably fix this up quite easily. And then we have the Parahog. This is really cool. When I first started collecting Action Man, I really wanted one of these. Um, they're very kind of what I consider iconic. A lot of people were showing them off in their um, pictures on the internet and on Facebook groups when they were starting off. But these prices are rising on these. I seem, can't seem to find them for under 50, 60 pounds, fortunately. So this one was, um, it's running to the deal already. I got this for 50 pounds. It's more likely to stay in my collection. It is complete. It just needs a bit of TLC, but apart from that, it's pretty good. The box has got some wear, which is annoying, but apart from that, it's actually a nice box. Now this is it. It's the one thing I've always wanted. The Action Man Special Mission Briefcase. Now, I believe, and people will correct me if I'm wrong, that there's quite a few of these on the market. And I think they were given out either to toy shops or given out, given out to reps. I think they made quite a lot of them because there's a few rep boxes in the UK you can get, which are um, made of wood from the 60s. There's about three or four in existence that I'm aware of. But these are much more easy to come by. These are probably late 70s, early 80s. They appear to only have been released in Belgium. Most of these come from Europe. So it feels really heavy. So I'm going to try and crack it open now and have a look. It comes with the keys, which is pretty cool. I imagine they're usually always missing. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Look how cool that box art is. That to me is amazing. I really love toy art work, toy art box work. It really kind of um sells a toy for a lot of kids back in the day and it's one of the things that's missing from branding nowadays nowadays everything has a very generic brand everything's the same color for this wave of toys everything will have one picture on it you know if you get a star wars toy nowadays it'll have a picture of Darth Vader in the corner and that'd be it for every single figure regardless of what film it came from if it has any involvement in Darth, with Darth Vader it'll just be Darth Vader on everything because it's a piece of eye candy and it just people just go to it and they go yep that's what i want that's star wars but when people actually used to put a bit of effort into it, this is what kind of thing you would get. This is basically supposed to represent what the awesome book child suitcase would be, filled with your action man in his place and all of his accessories. And as you can probably tell, it's rammed. So I will try and go through this as quick as I can. There we have some... <laughs> Some kind of violin case sort of thing. Maybe if you're, if you're a gangster. That's pretty funny. 
um, some random things like that. That's like the cano. Uh, there's some arms and legs. There's a oh Kim. Okay. <laughs> That's a um, one of like action team heads. He's pretty cool. I never had one of these before. Then you've got the French Resistance figure. He is wearing the wrong jumper. It should be black, but still pretty cool. I'll probably strip him off and make him something else. We have a really cool officer here with the Sam Brown belt. Usually always missing the strap. Always missing that strap. So that's pretty cool. I need to check that out to make sure it's the correct strap. Sometimes you can use the Canadian Mountie belt. And that's a great figure to find. Always good to find that one. There's so many pieces in here. I, I, I will try and show you a majority of it, but I can't go through everything. It would just take too long. Canadian Mountie. He's pretty cool. I always find the bearded figures go for quite a lot more money than the um, normal figures. I don't know what that is. There's the cardboard box, the um, suitcase from the cold set. There is so much here. I could spend days and days and days going through this. Another oxygen um, tank. I really keep forgetting what those are called. It's really strange. Yeah, here we go. For, for the diver. That's the thing you blow in. So that will go into his like into his chest sort of thing. You blow in this, and then the diver would sink. That's a pretty cool thing to find. And there's lots of other small pieces in here, like these here. I don't think this is Action Man. I don't think this is Action Man related to any of the European lines. Some of it might be. It's got a motor on it. Right. We're very careful with this plastic. This plastic is quite flimsy. And then we have another load. Oh. This is literally the job lot that keeps on giving. Where should we start? Bazooka. Action Man. This is your typical 1980s blue pants, eagle eyes Action Man. Somebody's tried to replace his head with a uh, paper clip. It's a bit loose. And we've still got his, his neck post, which is good. But that there is an easy easy £25 on eBay. They go for really well. People love the eagle eyes figures. Then we've got the German off German stores. German Stormtrooper. He's wearing the officer's cap. He hasn't got the officer's trousers on though, so he's not technically, technically an officer. Um, he's pretty cool. We've got some paperwork. Lots of paperwork. Majority of it will be your typical equipment manuals. Your star scheme. Send away and get some free action pieces. Uh, yeah, that's what that is. That's pretty cool. I always like the paperwork because it was nice. That, I do not know what that is. I think it might be something like a plunk. Lots and lots and lots of your typical easy to find pieces like your radio packs, your chairs and stuff. Still pretty cool, still pretty cool. And then we have another action man, and he is wearing the Arctic, polar Arctic gear. Um, so overall, I think this is pretty much it now. I'm not going to keep going because that's pretty much it, really. But I could spend hours going for every single piece with you, but it would take far too long. Thank you very much for watching this. I know it's a bit chopped up, and I was a bit rushed. I get it. I do apologise, but um, I really wanted to get this out to you again as quick as I can. There's some lovely things here, some lovely items. I'm going to spend a couple of weeks digging through these and pulling out stuff to, to sell on. If anybody sees anything they like, everything's for sale. This box isn't though, that becomes my personal collection because that to me is my work. It's like, a, it's like a dream piece. Anyway, thank you much for watching. Appreciate it as always and happy hunting.